are UFOs a threat? To even have a semblance of hope to answer that question, we first need to define what exactly a threat is. I would argue that UFO intelligence doesn't even have to have a hostile attitude toward Earth's inhabitants in order for it to be considered a genuine threat. Just look at Travis Walton. Him and his fellow loggers saw a very strange light off into the distance, and so they decided to get a closer look to, and check it out. As they got within very close proximity, they recognized this was no light. This was a, a saucer-shaped machine. Travis Walton got out of the truck because he wanted to get an even closer look, and by doing so, he became vulnerable to a discharge from the machine. Now, many UFO buffs are adamant that this wasn't a mistake and was not done intentionally by the machine. I'm not convinced of that, but let's just say that's the case. This would be the perfect demonstration of UFO intelligence having absolutely no hostile intent, but nevertheless still mortally wounding a human being. So if you are to maintain that the injury Travis Walton incurred from UFO intelligence was nothing but an accident, then I have no idea how in the same breath you can assert with any level of certainty that there will be zero accidents or dangers for human beings from UFO intelligence in the future. Now, considering the sheer technological capabilities of UFO technology, they are at minimum theoretically capable of making errors that could lead to catastrophes that would make Travis Walton's misfortune look like a nothing burger. Scientist Deep Prasad has stated that he's pretty sure that a Tic Tac UAP, such as the ones that were encountered during the USS Nimitz UFO event series, hurling to the ground at full speed could potentially create an extinction event on this planet similar to the one that occurred to the dinosaurs when a meteor smashed into the earth. He further states that the power of one Tic Tac UAP at full speed, speed hitting the ground is equivalent to a, a Hiroshima bomb, give or take two orders of magnitude. Now, do I th think a UAP traveling at full speed is going to smash into the ground somewhere on our planet due to a mechanical error. No, I, I really don't. However, it's certainly on the table. You can't rule it out. So anyone making a proclamation that UFOs are not a threat are being woefully premature in their assessment when the truth of the matter is that even though a UAP has never caused a catastrophic accident doesn't mean that it won't or that it can't 20 years from now or 500 years from now for that matter. Now, I know some within the UFO community believe that the US government has successfully shot down UFOs. I'm personally very skeptical of this claim, but let's say it's true. How can we possibly predict what would happen when any government in the world, let's say because of a lack of restraint, shoots down a UAP. Can we really predict what the outcome is going to be? Can we know with certainty it's not going to explode into a gigantic ball of fire enveloping a large part of the earth? Can we really know with certainty that it won't cause the machine to malfunction because we shot it down, but we only got a piece of it, and that negatively altered the mechanics of it, and then it starts hurling toward the earth at extraordinary speeds and then creates a huge explosion. The bottom line is human beings, world governments are primitive, and you cannot expect every government on the planet to show the restraint not to shoot something out of the sky when they don't know what it is. And this is another way that UFO intelligence can present a very serious risk to this earth. At this point, someone may say, well, wait a minute, bro. They know UAP are not a threat. They've had enough experience with them to 
make that assessment, so they shouldn't be trying to shoot them out of the sky. I find this assessment really troubling. Because what it tells me is that you are chin deep in ideology to the extent that you can't think of any other possible scenarios. That's dangerous. Let me give you a very plausible scenario, one that you simply cannot rule out. Let's say the Chinese or the Russian government were able to duplicate this technology to the point where they could create vehicles for which you couldn't differentiate differentiate between true alien vehicles and ones the Russians and Chinese have crafted with their own hands. If the Chinese or Russians were ever able to do that, do you really expect the U.S. government to just relax when they see a UAP in close proximity, proximity to an ICBM launch facility? Throw away your ideology. Beyond all this, can we really say with any degree of certainty what the agenda is of UFO intelligence? For one thing, it may be UFO intelligences with varying agendas according to whatever species or entities are engaging our planet. Furthermore, if you are to look at the 70-year UFO historical record, you will clearly see that some people have positive experiences with interacting with this intelligence or intelligences. Other people have negative, unsolicited experiences. The data is all over the place. So we really don't have any clarity on what the heck is going on. At this point, some of my audience probably wants to make the argument that if UFOs were a threat, we wouldn't be here right now going about our lives. And to that, I could potentially retort with, well, envision a, a zoo owner. Does a zoo owner kill it's the animals that it owns? And the fact that the zoo owner does not kill the animal, animals that it owns, is that really a demonstration that the animals are free and that their interests are not being conflicted with by their owners? So as you see, at best, those that say UFOs are definitely not a threat and those that say they definitely are only have arguments. And you simply can't conflate arguments with proof establishing whether or not UFOs are a threat or not. No matter how brilliant you think your argument is, that is not proof that they're a threat and it is not proof that they're not a threat. The simple fact is that we need more data, way more data, well before we can make any, any conclusion that's airtight on how to depict the nature of UFO intelligence. And if you want to know what the former head of ATIP thinks regarding whether UAP are a threat or not, here's his answer. The bottom line is we don't know. And anybody who says that they know for sure it's not a threat, they don't know what they're talking about because they know. I don't, I don't think any of us at this point really know whether or not definitively this is or is not a threat. So I think just to be on the, on the side of safety is that we go ahead and, uh, you know, presume something with this type of technological capability could be a threat should it want to be a threat. In that same podcast, I think Chris Mellon gave a very clear explanation as to why some within the U.S. government at minimum are justified to be freaked out by UAP incursions. When I met Lou, this, this was the situation. Imagine a military base with extremely sensitive uh, capabilities inside, including uh, nuclear weapons, a high fence around it with barbed wire, posted no trespassing, and security personnel are seeing strange dudes that aren't American military walking around inside the perimeter. And no, it's not getting reported. It's not going up the chain. And not only is it happening, it's happening on a recurring basis and week after week. And, you know, pilots are reporting that, well, that's what was going on in the air. These are restricted military areas where our carrier battle groups are doing workups and so forth. And they're being penetrated on an ongoing recurring basis. And, 
nobody in the chain of command is being informed. And that's, that's unacceptable. That, that's incredible. That's a breakdown in the system. So that was one of the things that, that motivated us and, um, and got us engaged at the outset. And that's why we consider it a potential threat. What I find interesting about what Mellon stated is that even if you were to make the argument that there are some very small special access programs buried deep within the national security apparatus that knows what's going on regarding UAP, it's clear that those people in those programs <clears throat> do not share information with aviators and radar operators and all these different military positions that are actually prone to potentially having a run-in, run-in, shall we call it, with non-human intelligence. In fact, the female pilot during the USS Nimitz UFO event series, she stated very clearly that if she was alone and she saw the Tic Tac, not only would she have been comp very, very frightened from the experience, she wouldn't have told anybody after she landed on the carrier because of the stigma. So you can't really get mad at military personnel having, having an emotional response to something they see that they don't know what it is and could be perceived as a threat because they don't know what it is. I want to briefly touch on the fact that UFOs are attracted to nuclear technology. And of course, that can be interpreted in many different ways. Here is a quote from Luis Elizondo from 2019. Yes, we do know for a fact that there's some strategic interest in our nuclear capabilities, whether it's nuclear energy, nuclear weapons development, nuclear delivery capabilities. That's about all I can say. If I didn't have a security clearance, I could probably talk more about this, but I can't. I can't even speculate. The crown jewel of U.S. defense is its nuclear capability, and the U.S. government is very, very protective of that information. And here's a quote from Robert Hastings regarding UFOs interest in nukes. In addition to the theory that the aliens mean to help humanity prevent a nuclear war for ultra reasons, there are alternate scenarios that might also explain their interest in these monstrously destructive weapons. Although I doubt this is to be true, the entities might have nefarious plans for our race, such as invading and conquering Earth, and do not wish to inherit a planet that has been poisoned with the widespread radioactivity that would result from a large-scale nuclear conflict. Even if this proposed explanation has no merit, it should at least be seriously considered given the potentially dire consequences involved. Indeed, I suspect that those in the know at the Pentagon and in the Kremlin have already given serious thought to the idea and have developed strategies to attempt to deal with such an outcome. Now I want to ask my audience, can you with any degree of certainty rule out that scenario that Robert Hastings just outlined for you? I really don't think you can get anywhere near ruling that out. Here's another quote from Robert Hastings regarding nukes. As the years passed and the number of my interviews with USAF veterans gradually increased, it became ever clearer that a UFO nukes connection existed and was tremendously important. Significantly, according to the veterans, the high level of secrecy assigned to the UFO incidents and missile sites left little doubt that the upper echelons of the military had concluded that U.S. national security had been fundamentally impacted as a result of these enigmatic incursions. In other words, if war with the Soviet Union or some other adversary had arrived at a time coinciding with the missile malfunctions, some number of America's ICBMs could not have been launched. If those in the know at the Pentagon were determined to keep the Soviets from learning about these unexpected and unsettling developments because publicly acknowledging them would be to reveal a deficiency in U.S. strategic readiness, they were necessarily resolved to keep the Americans in the dark. The two goals were obviously intertwined and the first could not be achieved without the latter. So this is another way UFOs can be a threat. Even if they are turning off nukes to send a message to the Russians and to the Americans of how insanely dangerous and ridiculous it is to play with these weapons, it still makes whatever side they're turning the nukes off vulnerable. So when they turn the United States nukes off, now the United States, if they were to be attacked by Russia, they, they are at a strategic disadvantage because some of the nukes that were turned off cannot be cannot be utilized to respond to a Russian attack and vice versa. So this is yet another way UFOs can justifiably 
be perceived by the national security apparatus as a threat. And that remains true independent of whatever message UFO intelligence is trying to send to nation states. I hope I've imparted upon you the usefulness of having an opinion on whether or not this non-human intelligence presence is a threat and to what degree it is or is not a threat. Because we as a society and as a civilization are going to be having a tremendous amount of conversations, discussions, and debates on this very topic. And we are going to require our scientists, our philosophers, our theologians, our teachers, our generals, our journalists, and everyone in between to assist furthering this conversation about what it means to not be alone in the universe and to be engaged by non-human intelligence. That is the world that we live in. I believe that at any given moment, 24 hours a day, someone is intersecting with this phenomena. Whether it's an aviator off in the Pacific Ocean seeing a mysterious vehicle that's not piloted by humans, or someone who's taking a hike in the forest, happens to notice some weird craft flying through the sky. Maybe a scuba diver who sees something flowing, f traveling through the ocean, or a submarine picking up some unknown vehicle traversing the ocean at speeds that are, shouldn't even be possible moving through water or frankly sometimes in people's bedrooms when they did not solicit for it and that is the truth isn't it this is not a phenomena that just does its thing away and apart from humanity ah uh -uh, that's not what this phenomena is about it may do that to a large extent but it, but the other side of the coin is it interacts with humanity intimately probably Every moment of every day, somewhere on the globe, it's intimately engaging humanity. And that's the conversation we are fast approaching that we are going to have. And the irony is that because of our lack of knowledge, because of our lack of understanding, because of the gaps in our knowledge about this phenomena, by virtue of not knowing enough, it will facilitate humanity unifying, having a common goal, lighting a fire under our butts to pursue knowledge about this extremely advanced, extremely sophisticated intelligence or intelligences that may have been here since the beginning of time. So that common goal that is motivated by not knowing what it is, not knowing what its agenda is. It's our ignorance that will actually facilitate humanity having a greater feeling of union and recognizing that we all have more in common than differences. And I will say this, in general, I agree with this tweet by the director of the film Unacknowledged, Michael Mazzola. Even if they are a threat, which I doubt, but you never know, our only option is to become peaceful ambassadors. Please don't forget to subscribe. And just a little bit of news, I just started a YouTube membership. So you'll see a little join button below this video where you could become a member of this channel and get some perks. No one yet has joined out of all my subscribers. So if you're the first one, you're not going to get anything special, but you will make history, my friend. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. episode.